This story is being provided for two key reasons. One, this is a story for all small business owners to be aware of the pitfalls of engaging with unethical business entities. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is a scam. This information can also be used to supplement proceedings to keep KWAC from continuing to hurt others as she has done to me. In November 2013, small business owner Cass Tang sent a memo to Washington State Attorney General Bob Ferguson regarding a fraud perpetrated on her by Keisha Williams of Loudoun County, Virginia. The Office of the Washington Attorney General declined to intervene, so she decided to fight for herself. In February and March 2013, a small business owner living near Tacoma, Washington, paid $96,000 to another small business owner living in Loudoun County, Virginia, near Washington, D.C. In exchange, the small business owner from Washington State expected to receive research and professional bids written by the small business owner from Loudoun County for submission to U.S. government agencies. Instead, the small business owner from Loudoun County squandered the $96,000 traveling the world, lodging in five-star hotels, and dining in exquisite restaurants. After she appeared doomed to lose in court, she moved some of her nearly $1 million in savings 12,000 miles away to banks on another continent and probably created straw men to hide even more of the money she virtually stole from Castang and others. Beginning in 2011, Castang undertook the rigors of getting her business All Project Solutions completely certified as an 8A minority-owned, woman-owned firm by the U.S. Small Business Administration. All Project Solutions, a project management company located in the Puget Sound area of Washington State, experienced modest success under Ms. Tang's leadership and management. But, despite her toil and success, fulfilling her vision for growing the company required her to explore outside the market of the Puget Sound area. With an impressive resume of clients, a strong background in engineering, achieving leadership seats among her peers, and even winning appointment by the governor of the state of Washington, Ms. Tang felt equipped to seek out professional guidance to grow her business. Creative, authoritative, intelligent, industrious, and savvy, Ms. Tang set out to find new resources to grow all project solutions, hire more employees, and find ways to contribute to the local economy with her company. In 2013, Ms. Tang found her way to the William M. Factory Small Business Incubator in Tacoma, where she met a man and a woman also interested in growing their businesses. They gave her a pamphlet of information about Keisha Williams and Associates LLC, and they each introduced Ms. Tang to Keisha Williams, whose business, Keisha Williams and Associates Consulting LLC in Loudoun County, Virginia, promoted itself as providing solutions that will allow organizations to advance to the next level of business operations and increase revenue. It sounded like a good fit for APS. So Ms. Tang began her due diligence. Williams promoted her business, Keisha Williams & Associates, LLC, as an innovative think tank and intellectual property strategy consulting firm. Ms. Williams also claimed an impressive CV of education and experience. She lists that she holds a Juris Doctorate with concentration on intellectual property and that she holds an MS in Systems Engineering with concentration in Electrical Engineering. The CV also claims Ms. Williams completed a three-year Lockheed Martin Management and Data Systems Engineering Leadership Development Program and worked for various large, mid-size, and small organizations, including the MITRE Corporation, General Dynamics, Advanced Information Systems, Government Solutions, and Creative Technology Incorporated. However, Williams knew she needed more to convince Ms. Tang and others. To complete her image as an experienced consultant with successful clients, she manufactured references using employees, relatives, and even the two parties that first introduced her to Ms. Tang. Then, with the hook firmly in place, Williams produced a phony chart and pie graph projecting the earnings for APS at over $8 million profit from a $54 million federal contract that existed only in her imagination, and she landed APS. This convinced Ms. Tang, and she agreed to enter into a contract for Keisha Williams' consulting services.
Within a month of producing a phony pie chart convincing Ms. Tang that APS stood to profit by as much as $8 million by engaging Casa Williams and Associates, Williams convinced Ms. Tang to sign an agreement in February 2013, and Ms. Tang wired her $96,000. The agreement provided that Keisha Williams shall act in the role of business strategy development and personal writing consultant as they pursued federal government business opportunities. The contract added, Keisha Williams will extend every effort to achieve superior performance in capturing and developing business opportunities, and went on to state 17 other objectives that Keisha Williams would undertake on behalf of APS, including using existing leads to capture business, utilizing the latest tools to seek and qualify opportunities for APS to capture, and development of sales presentations and action plans for potential new clients, and oversee development of proposal. The contract stated, KWAC will make best efforts to produce proposals for dissemination to prospective contracts during the contract term. APS shall access to Ms. Williams for the explicit purpose of writing proposals to win contract opportunities. These efforts will extend to governmental, non-governmental, federal, state, and local business opportunities, ventures, and contracts. These words prove nothing but hollow and empty over the next few months. In June 2014, after hiring Puyallup Washington law firm Acevedo and Johnson LLC, Ms. Tang's company, All Project Solutions, filed a complaint against defendants Keisha Williams, her company, Keisha Williams and Associates, along with other parties. The civil action originated in Pierce County Superior Court in the state of Washington. The complaint alleged fraud, breach of contract, civil conspiracy, violation of the Consumer Protection Act, and unjust enrichment, but Williams offered a defense that included contact officers from branches of the U.S. Armed Forces, attendance at international health care conferences, and a detailed report partially plagiarized from sources like IBM. As part of her defense, Williams claimed she worked with the U.S. Army and Air Force to secure government contracts for APS but she never produced any documentation. Plaintiff's Freedom of Information Act request submitted to the U.S. Army and Air Force produced no documents suggesting Williams ever worked with either branch on behalf of their party. Also in her defense, Williams alleged she attended the 2013 Health Information and Management Systems Society Conference in New Orleans and Dubai on behalf of APS. In an email to Ms. Tang, Williams stated, I was invited to HIMSS by decision makers who I already had relationships to network with some of the colleagues, counterparts, and to forecast and capture future contracts. Nonetheless, Williams manufactured a report given to Tang that lifted verbatim excerpts regarding the conferences from the websites of IBM, the American College of Physicians, PR Newswire, among others. In the months that followed, plaintiff continued to request reports, which Williams sometimes put off with hollow promises or tried excuses. In May 2013, Williams reassured plaintiff, stating, I am working with contract officers to push awards now and hope to have a contract close ASAP. APS became very concerned and continued to ask for updates or any status at all. In August, Williams stated, I've had several contracts awarded over the past weeks that were in the pipeline, and my goal is to keep pressing for the remaining. In September 2013, Williams explained her failure to provide reports due to a family emergency. Yet, according to her bank statements, on the dates in question between September 6th and September 10th, Williams spent $4,240 at a jeweler's, over $1,500 at the U.S. Open Tennis Championships, spent at least one evening at an upscale Washington, D.C. nightclub, and withdrew over $6,000 in cash. Because Williams failed to produce her bank records as requested as part of the discovery in the lawsuit, APS filed subpoenas with her banks. Williams's bank statements told a shameful story of three months of extravagance and conspicuous consumption balanced on the back of Castang and APS. From February 19th through April 30th, two and a half months just following Ms. Tang's wire transfer to Williams of nearly $100,000, Williams squandered at least $100,000, including over $14,000 at apparel stores, over $8,000 at dining establishments, and over $15,000 at hotels. She she also withdrew nearly $40,000 in cash from ATMs by conventional withdrawal or withdrawals by conventional check. One of the hotels Williams frequented in that period included the five-star rated Four Seasons Hotel in Baltimore, Maryland, less than 50 miles from her home in Loudoun County. Approximately $5,000 of her dining expenses also occurred within 50 miles of Williams' home in those short 10 weeks. Nearly 90% of the cash withdrawals also came from banks within 50 miles of her home. Despite all this expense, ostensibly in the best interests of Ms. Tang, Williams produced nothing. She knowingly delayed while she quietly moved her assets. 
After winning her motion for summary judgment on all counts in October 2015, Ms. Tang moved the court for a judgment including attorney's fees. The court also awarded Ms. Tang treble damages due to the Consumer Protection Act violation. Unfortunately for APS, Williams knew she faced doom as early as a year before. At the same time, she filed her one-page motion to dismiss in August 2014, which the court denied. Just a few weeks before, near the beginning of July 2014, Williams's bank account held more than a million dollars. About two months later, beginning in September 2014, Williams started making large international wire transfers out of the account, including nearly $150,000 to one Africa-based bank, and almost the same amount to a second Africa-based bank that month. Another curious transfer came a month later when she wired $325,000 to a man research indicates is a San Francisco Bay Area architect but probably acted as a straw man for Williams to hide her assets. In less than four months, by the beginning of November 2014, Williams moved or liquidated over $1 million, already knowing she never intended to deliver any product to APS, and by the end of the year, the account balance reached zero, and she closed her account. Just like in September 2014, in November 2014, Williams made a second international wire transfer to Access Bank PLC, headquartered in Nigeria, Africa. Other notations on Williams Williams' bank statements seem to indicate other large wire transfers to another bank in Africa called the African Development Bank, headquartered in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. The total transferred to this bank appeared to approach $350,000, bringing the total probably transferred to Africa-based banks alone to well over $600,000. As of mid-2017, with much of her wealth well hidden, the court's award totaling over $420,000 to APS remains uncollected. This charlatan remains in default, owes Ms. Tang the entire amount plus interest, and continues to evade payment. Williams remains unpunished in this civil matter, despite Ms. Tang retaining an attorney in Virginia to subject Williams to supplemental proceedings, which force a party to disclose assets so the prevailing party may seize, garnish, or lien the assets. During those proceedings, Williams claimed no assets to her name. Williams' home went into foreclosure in late 2015, and all the bank accounts she disclosed to the interviewing attorney held no funds. Even under oath, scam artists like Williams knowingly lie and hide assets, betting they beat the slim probability of a civil action from across the United States ever catching up to them. Before snaring Ms. Tang, Williams faced at least two similar court actions, one in her home county of Loudoun, Virginia, and another in Prince George's County, Maryland, also near her home. The website of Keisha Williams & Associates remains live as she continues to prowl for new, unsuspecting marks. Loopholes and broad language open to multiple interpretations offer a good degree of insulation for the savvy con artists using artful language, strong education, and substantial work experience to prey upon hopeful clients with dreams of better futures. Ms. Tang's attorneys received no help from Loudoun County in this matter, and the authorities there seem content to let Williams remain uninvestigated for criminal fraud. And even though not shown in this production, it appears Williams probably violated IRS rules, but even they appear uninterested. As of May 2017, Ms. Tang paid over $125,000 in attorney's fees in her pursuit of Williams, which began in April 2014. The pursuit of Williams and her assets continues. Ms. Tang's attorneys remain on the hunt for this slippery con artist and her assets wherever she moves them.